Let's see what the nerdy students are creating. We are so excited for this because this is going to be the first ever student showcase where we take a look at a game cartridge sent in by one of you nerdy students out there. So let's load it up. Check this out. This is so cool. Oh my gosh, just from one of our tutorials to see what you guys do with it, something we didn't even think about is so amazing. All right, what do I even talk about first? I mean, well, I gotta start with the player. You upgraded our Water Tribe Ninja Dude to a Firebender. Look at that red. That red looks good. Pay attention in your art classes, guys, because if you know color theory, then you'll understand why red was such a good choice. See, red and green are contrasting colors, and that means that they make each other pop. So, well done. Great choice there. All right, look at the coin. That is a beautiful animation, the spinning coin, a classic game feature. You can never go wrong with it. Just makes me want to get up there and take it. Oh, wait a second. Look, you even added sound. Awesome. Okay, so there's running and sliding sounds. How about jumping? Yep, that's so cool. Okay, let's go for the coin. It's just taunting us. By the way, this platform up high on the living bamboo, I didn't even think of that. Makes me imagine, oh, there could be like a bamboo tree village. How awesome would that be? I just love it. And of course, check out the tall grass down below. That's such a good idea. It's even animated too. I can't wait to check out how you did that. Oh, this is so perfect. Okay, so the grass was drawn and placed so nicely that it appears to be a part of the background. But look at this, the player slips behind it. And now it looks like the player is really in the world, not just running on top of some flat, boring land. There's now depth to this game. I can run in front of the bamboo and behind the grass. It's the little things like this, guys. This is really well done. I can't wait to check out the code. But before we do, I just want to say that this was sent in just after we posted Platformer 5. So this nerdy student, in only like a day after that video came out, they added all this stuff. And this is a nerdy student new to programming and game development. So that's really impressive. You got the passion and you obviously learn fast. So keep going, putting in the time and the effort to learn and getting creative with it. Come on, how fun is it, right? So let's take a peek behind the scenes and see how you did it. Yep, here's the player table from the tutorial. That looks good. Okay, these are new. A coin table and a grass table. Awesome. Got some tips for you here, but we'll come back to it. Let's check out the update and draw. Cool, cool, cool. Wow, you tackled making your own custom functions. Look at this update function. So nice and clean and very clear function names too. No doubt in my mind what those do. Oh, okay. And a little peek into what you have planned in the future. Some coin pickup animation. And you commented it out until you're ready for it. Such a pro move. Here it is, the secret of the grasses. So Pico 8 doesn't actually have a Z axis for near and far objects. And there's no layers either. Like some other game development programs, they let you select what layer each object is drawn on and you're done. But to create depth in Pico 8 like you did here with the grass is a lot less obvious than that. So this draw function will draw to the game screen in the exact order you code it here. What that means is the first thing you draw ends up being the farthest away and whatever you draw next will just be drawn right on top of it. And this gives the appearance of layers. So to take advantage of this, you're drawing the map in the back, then the player in the middle, and then you're adding the coins in the grass so that when the player moves over the same space as one of those, the game draws the grass over the player, making it look like the player is moving in a layer between the map and the grass. I don't know if you knew that when you coded this or if you just stumbled into it, but that's how it works. And this looks really good. So well done here. And we've got a couple tips for you here too, but let's check out the animation first. Okay, so the player update is here. Good, just like the tutorial. Wait a second, I saw that. You added the SFX, the sound effects function. Yep, that's a perfect place to put the jump noise. Good job. Let's see, you must have added one for running. Yeah, there it is. Oh, and you made this a new check. Great job commenting in your own code. A lot of new programmers don't do that enough. Let's see what you're checking for. Running and landed. Good, good. 
yeah, you actually do have to check if they landed because the way the code is set up now, you can actually be running and in the air, even though it won't look like it. So maybe we should code that differently just so that if you're running, then you're definitely also on the ground. But I don't know, I'll have to think that through some more. So good job catching that and making sure that this sound only works when you're running on the ground. I'd just make this a new line just so that we can see it on the Pico 8 screen. And I wouldn't really do this if I were coding outside of Pico 8. So this isn't a rule or anything, it's totally up to you. Okay, there's the player animate function from the tutorial. Oh wait, is this a problem? Watch out for this because having too many or too few ends in your code could throw some strange errors and make it hard to tell where the problem really is. So that's why indenting properly is really important, especially to keep track of your functions, ifs, and elses. But this game didn't error, so let's just see here. I'm just going through and matching ends to where they start and tracing it back so we can see where this end belongs. Okay, so this end just needs to be indented once, and it's all good. Just be careful with that. Okay, here we go. The coin animation code. So you use the same if time minus coin animation time is more than 0.1. Cool, no problem. It works well. And you're doing the same for the grass? Yep, nice. Now, I have not yet made the video on another way you can animate sprites, and that's the one I'd use for these types of items and background sprites. It's a little bit shorter in code length and a little bit harder to explain, but the difference between the two techniques is this one here is great for individual animation timing. So like if you have two different players, you want them to animate at different times, right? You wouldn't want them to breathe at the exact same time together because it wouldn't look natural. But like in this game, the grass moves together and it still looks good. So you don't need as much control over the individual timing with some items and background sprites. So the other way to animate would work well for these. We'll make a video for that animation technique for sure. All right, let's look at the sprites. There's the coin, awesome. And another little sneak preview of something here. Let's see, is this like a ninja throwing star? Oh, that'll be so cool. But where's the grass? Oh, sweet. Again, very impressed that you've really picked up on these little details. You've got the items on the first sprite sheet tab and the grass on the second tab with the map sprites. Keeping your code organized and your sprite sheet organized is actually a really important skill to have as a programmer and game developer. And we have seen a lot of new students overlooking those things. So well done again on attention to detail while you're watching these tutorials, really impressed. Now these animation sprites use a lot of sprite sheet space, and you could probably shrink them down to just like four sprites each. That's just so you can fit more of them on here, so you can always cut it back later if you find that you need the space. Now here's another tip from the nerdy art teacher. Let's look at the coin animation closely. See how the dark side of the coin flips from the left side to the right side as it turns? Well actually, when you're making art for your game, it's important to consider where the light is coming from. And to make it easy, just pick one direction. So if the light is coming from the right, then all shadows are going to be on the left. And the shadows will stay on the left even if the coin flips. So just to demonstrate that, I'll change the coin sprites a bit. And so now it ends at coin 20 and we'll reset to coin 17. So just find the coin animation function in the code and change the max sprite to 20. Still reset to 17, so don't have to change that. Cool, let's check it out now. There you go, less sprites used and it should even look more realistic. At least as realistic as you can get for a giant floating spinning coin. But you know, it's the little things. Let's go back for some more coding tips. The animation code looks great. So let's go back to the variables. So this is fantastic. You're not afraid to use your own tables to organize your variables just like we did with the player. And if you can think through that to create your own tables and get data from your tables properly, that is a big level up as a programmer, my friend. But keep your code formatting consistent. And again, 
Indenting properly really helps you read the code, and here it sets the table name apart from the variable names. Actually, they're the names of the keys inside the table, but it's fine to just still think of them as variables. Now this SP before X, Y, W, and H is probably going to give you trouble later, because since this is the coin, and I already know that you're going to do coin collision for the coin pickup later, then you're probably going to want to use an object collision function, a lot like the map collision function we used, where it needs objects and tables, just like you already have it, so that's perfect, but then it will also need those objects to have consistent key names for x, y, width, and height. So just like the player has it, it's okay, you can give these the exact same name as what's in the player table, and because they are in different tables, they won't get confused with each other. So then later when we do object collision, we can pass the player table and the coin table to it, and it can compare player x to coin x, no problem. So that's just a heads up to make coding easier later. Let's see what else there was. Okay, I won't be able to show you here, but eventually I'll show you a nice easy way to organize many game objects and draw them all with only a few lines of code. Just a little spoiler, it involves putting tables inside other tables. Oh, it's so cool. And it might sound confusing, but once you get it, you pretty much take your programming to a whole new level. So keep an eye out for that tutorial, and until then, this is a perfectly fine way to do it. And that's really all the tips we have for you. Let's just admire it one more time as we wrap up. This looks so cool, and this was so awesome to showcase. Thank you for sharing it with us. It is really impressive how much you've learned already, and you're able to build off of the tutorials we made and just run with it. You know, that's what we're here for. That's what we love to see. Well done already on this. We can't wait to see what you end up making from it. I know it's gonna be good. All right, that's it for this Nerdy Student Showcase. We will absolutely love to see more games from any of you nerdy students out there and all the creative ways you are altering, adding, and enhancing our basic tutorials into developing your own games. So consider sharing your work, even if it's still a work in progress. It's so cool to see, and others can definitely learn from it too. Our email is in the description. This is Nerdy Teachers giving huge appreciation to the person who sent us this game cart. Let's show our support in the comments, everyone, and tell this student how awesome this was to see. You all have been really supportive of this channel, so it's only right to showcase your work and let you guys be supportive of each other as well. And let's keep growing this amazing community of passionate learners, gamers, programmers, and every kind of awesome nerd out there. We are Nerdy Teachers. Leave some nerdy support for this student in the comments. See you there.